Hey guys, so let's talk about Sisyphus versus Djokovic, today's semi-final semi uh, of Roland Garros and talk about the psychological part of it all and what I think about uh, their psychology during the match. Uh, it was um, a really great match. I believe that fifth set wasn't that great because apparently Tsitsipas was injured. He said that he was injured, but I actually thought during the match that he was um, he was really tired because even in the second set you could tell that in comparison with Djokovic his breath was so much harder. But it sounds like from what he said the press conferences from press conference after the match we can conclude that he was just injured so he couldn't fight as as much as he wished he could. Um, yeah, but this is a great match and uh, there are several lessons that we can really learn from these amazing players and the first one that I want to talk about is Djokovic's ability to move on. Sometimes it's so hard to accept your mistakes or just accept missed opportunities and really move on, but Djokovic somehow has been able to achieve that. He had a match point in the third, in the third set on his serve. And he, unfortunately for him, lost that uh, lost that set in the next set, and then there was this final set where Sisyphus couldn't really uh, compete as much as he did in the second and the third, uh, in the third and the fourth set. So I don't know what's the reason and why he has been able to really move on that fast from his mistakes because like five years ago Djokovic was a completely different person he was so emotional he would react to every single mistake he did he was like a really emotional guy and right now I watch him and I see this almost like a robot like he doesn't show any when he whenever he wins whether he wins or loses he just doesn't show that much of emotion and it's either there could be several reasons why this is happening the first one could be that he may be working with psychologists um, the second one could be it's possible that he just found this um, this strategy of behavior as more Efficient I guess because he doesn't lose energy like whining. He was actually whining I don't know if that's a good word choice in the first step a lot It seemed to me, but not really after he was he missed his opportunity to win the match in the third set um, It also might be that he feels like he doesn't have a lot at stake, like he is not too worried about this match and that's what actually he did say at that press conference after the match, he did say that he feels like Sisyphus had more at stake because he was fighting for his first opportunity to play in the final of a Grand Slam and you know what I feel like ha deciding who has more at stake is really subjective but it is clear to me that for him, from what he's saying, it's uh, clear that for him there wasn't too much at stake during this match. Another thing that could um, that could lead him to behave in that manner and fashion to keep uh, to keep help him to keep his composure as good as he did is that he just played is just the fact that he has played so many matches and he had already he's like used to uh missing opportunities because you can't play a lot and not miss opportunities you know what i'm saying he has been through it so many times that now he just um he, it just doesn't bother him that much and he has experienced it, he knows what it feels like, he knows how to conquer it mentally and that's what he did today. So that was a really great uh, strategy I believe for him and strategy for everyone really to cope with um, disappointments and missed opportunities really and to move on as fast as you can. In my opinion, I think that in real life you can give yourself like five minutes to be disappointed uh, I'm really upset. I think he was uh, maybe disappointed for two seconds because you can't allow five minutes is like three games It might be three games like in tennis You don't have that much time to be disappointed about things But in tennis you have like maybe two seconds in between points and then you have to move on and that's exactly what Djokovic did I feel like 
and it really paid off. Talking about Sisyphus, I he's a great fighter, man. That was a great fight in the third set. Just coming back from uh, Djokovic's match point, he, you could tell that he really stepped up his game. Points uh, started to get a lot longer than they were the, the first two sets, and than there were first two sets. He showed himself as a really great fighter. Um, yeah, he's really young, so he has time, I feel like. I can't really say much about him, because this, to be honest, maybe is the second match I'm watching him, so I don't know what his baseline behavior really is so far, but I'm really going to look into him, because I think he is uh, a great tennis player. Uh, one thing I also noticed is that he was really emotion emotional. He was like screaming come on more and stuff in the third and fourth set first two sets it's it seemed like weird like Djokovic was like walking around like this robot you know what I'm saying <coughs> which is I, I assume is what uh, his new normal is in comparison with like five years ago which is when I was really following tennis because I was playing tennis and Anyway, so uh, yeah, I really need to look into his like baseline behavior to be able to see what's like a deviation for him. Yeah, so that's what I noticed. First two sets, he was not really emotional, and I don't feel I don't feel like uh, I don't feel like I feel like he needed to like be more uh, express his emotions more, like to scream, maybe come on, to you know try to support himself himself even vocally yeah basically um, that's i think that's it what else can i say yeah overall it was a great match um oh okay let's talk about nadal to, um the final it's nadal versus uh, djokovic obviously uh, djokovic beat nadal only one time on the clay court. There's only a handful of people who beat Djokovic, or who beat Nadal on clay. Who I think is gonna win? I personally think that Djokovic might be a little bit tired after today's match. Um, he said at the press conference that he has plenty of time, but I don't know if that's true. Even though, though now that I'm talking about it, I think that he didn't really look that tired on the court, which is like, I don't know what his uh, fitness routine is, but that just looks crazy. That he just, yeah, he doesn't seem like tired. His breath didn't doesn't get like too hard and stuff. Yeah, what do I think? Obviously, as Diego Schwarzman said at one of his press conferences, uh, Nadal really owes that place. And that is true, but Djokovic, uh, last 17 match, Djokovic didn't lose a single match. He, yeah, I don't know, I really think it's 50-50, it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say. I really think it's going to be five sets. It's going to be five sets, um, that's my prediction, and I think, who's going to win in the final set? Honestly, I think Djokovic is going to win. I don't know why. I think Jokovic is gonna win. Yeah, what do you guys think? Uh, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully.